So I caught a train to Paris to come and see this, the Renault Morphose, or as President Trump would pronounce it, the Renault, the Renault Morphose. I don't know what it is. This is what's really special about this. I genuinely don't know what this is. I've just been with some people from Renault. They don't know what it is either. It's going to be revealed now. It is a concept car, and we'd normally, I try not to go too crazy about concept cars, but Renault have done a lot in the electric car arena, and they're certainly going to do a lot more. I've heard all sorts of amazing projects they're working on, and this is very exciting. I think you'll be intrigued by this. I think this is worthy of a fully charged episode. So this is the Renault Morphos, and this is fully charged. From the point of view of having a concept car at a big auto show, this is very good. <laughs> I think it does the job. So Francois, what was the original starting point then? What drove it on? Was it the, the concept of having an adaptable vehicle? Is that? Yeah, definitely. The idea behind Morphos was to talk about the future, but in a very positive way. Today, when we speak about the future, most of the time we have a kind of fear of, of the future, especially in a car industry. But for us, it was very interesting to talk about this future in a very hope hoping way, you know, yeah. I could say. Positive way. Yeah, yeah positive yeah. way. And uh, combining uh, technology and at the same time uh, responsibility is a very difficult thing to do. So we kind of found this idea which seems to be so simple and obvious. And Morphos, through the transformation, was really the, 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 the idea of being able to adapt itself to the, to the environment and yeah. to the people. So it's like the image of the, the positive future. I have to say that I, you know, I've now seen enough quite weird concept cars at motor shows and you look at them and I'm, I, initially I'll go, wow, that's amazing, I can't wait. And then you understand you're never going to see that quite like that on the road. But this, the concept behind this, I really like, that the, 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 the notion of the adaptable vehicle. Mm. You know, because I mean, I'm very appreciative of the design details and what you're doing with the interior and everything. But in a sense, the big story for me is that you could have a smaller compact city car with, as we would see it, limited range. And then relatively simply, you drive somewhere and you go and the car gets bigger and it has a much bigger battery and you can drive hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. When you first explained it, I just saw it as, oh, that's a car that's got a smaller battery then you have a bigger one. But then that whole idea that you haven't just sort of gone, well, there's some big batteries somewhere over there. We don't even know. They're actually integrated into the grid. They're part of the grid structure. That's the idea that, because if you had, you know, a million of these cars on the road and you had a million <laughs> batteries that could go in them, but they're not in them, you've got a massive storage capability. I mean, if you look at it in that scale. Yeah, actually, we try to cross all the issues of the, the, the era, you know? Yeah. And uh, we have uh, issues with the environment, with the architecture, with the urban uh, network with the, of course, uh, cars in the street and uh, 
with the people themselves, they actually have to be smart in their life of the yeah. future. And being smart is not that easy. And feeling smart, in a way, I, is I like can't having, imagine it. I've seen yeah, pictures of yeah, being smart. I've yeah. never expressed it myself. <laughs> so being smart could be like being simply uh, um, uh, aware of what you do and, yeah. uh, and, and, and simply, uh, let's say, confident in what you, you choose. You know? yeah. So that's why we try to think about the big picture. Yeah. Because if you don't think in the big picture, you, you miss the point. try to actually uh, play with the same concept of uh, adaptability yeah. to a different scale on the car, which is uh, also uh, very good for designers because they could express themselves a different scale by using it on the whole car, yes. but on the seats, on the console, yeah. you know, in the screen, yeah. on the screen themselves, you know. So it's kind of, you know, a uh, scaled uh, concept uh, to show that how adaptability is certainly one of the key of the future to yeah. be actually in line. Uh, with your conscious. I think the exciting thing is it's, a, it's a, an idea that is made possible by the fact that it's an electric drivetrain. Because if, I mean, you know, I suppose you could do it if you had a combustion engine, a yeah. gearbox, a transmission system, but it would yeah, be so true. difficult. Yeah, you exactly, just get one. Exactly. I mean, yeah. If I can afford the image, I would say that with the electric platforms, we come back to something much easier to to use. In, in a yeah. way, it's a bit like a toy for yes. a child or for yeah. children. You know, they, they, a toy which which uh, which with you can play, you yeah. can you can uh, transform because it's it's modulable. Yeah. You know, so you can easily uh, like a Lego. Think yeah. how you can uh, module it in a way that you can play and propose different solutions. Yes, but if you imagine that you have a car that's say roughly that size that can seat four people comfortably, and then when you've finished driving it that day, it goes shroom, you know, it, it just shrinks right down because we use yeah. so much space in our yeah. cities leaving vehicles yeah. around. So yeah. the idea of it taking up less room yeah, when you're not using it is. It's true that we were very symbolic uh, yeah. with this concept car, and symbolically, the footprint is actually uh, the, the main goal of, uh, of tomorrow's uh, life. Right. Uh, controlling, uh, uh, maintaining our footprint as small as possible. Yes. So symbolically, uh, we made a car that kind of controls its own footprint, yeah. you know? And uh, that's why it's very, uh, I think, easy to understand as a concept. Yeah. And the other thing that you mentioned earlier, which I thought was really interesting, because when I first saw it, I, was, I could immediately, I could just hear, I'm very attuned to YouTube comments. To what people will say when they see this mm. this concept and one of them was oh the mechanism to make it bigger and smaller that's so complicated that's where that will go wrong but then when you mentioned aircraft i went yeah. of course yeah because we've been using that for decades yeah. you watch a wing as you yeah. come into land it yeah. gets much bigger exactly. it extends it, gets, yeah. it covers a bigger area yeah. it's the same technology basically airplanes are using technologies of uh, lightness yeah. of uh, controlling the surfacing with air, you know, of uh, deformation, of uh, adapting to the, to the, the environment in a yeah. way to fly simply, yeah. that we could transfer uh, into car industry in a way that we make very uh, intelligent, uh, futuristic concept, but also real cars. Yeah. So it's surprising that we wait so long to integrate them into uh, the possibilities that it yes. could offer yeah. to car industry. I mean, do you see that as, as an increasing possibility with new materials that you can use? that that kind of idea of a car that will expand, contract, uh, yeah, slide I, over I itself think, is, is, yeah. a, is a real plausible Definitely way Definitely materials are part of the future yeah. because they will be the key uh, for lightness. Good. Because we could Good. actually design it differently. Yeah, and you have the same notion. With the same, yeah, yeah, exactly. It could so, just all be a yeah. boring black box yeah. that yeah. gets longer and shorter. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do a boring black no, box. No, no, <laughs> of course not. No. <laughs> Yeah, the amount yeah. of times I've driven 
a short distance yeah. in a car that can do 300 yeah. miles. Yeah, yeah. I don't need yeah, 300 yeah. miles. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I was the designer of uh, Twizy. Right. So when, right. We, when, oh. when I did Twizy uh, originally, it was about minimalism, you know? Yeah. The whole concept behind Twizy was, what do we really, really need? You yeah, know, the, need four wheels and, we and a seat. four wheels and a seat. It's by talking with you now that I see the, the bridge yes. between the two. But I, it's yeah. by talking that suddenly I say, oh, I say yeah. to myself, but yeah. there's a bridge actually. Yeah. About this, uh, thinking about what you actually ne really need. Wouldn't it be great if it was possible that you have a Twizzy and then you, you press a button and it goes <laughs> and it turns into that? <laughs> that's a movie. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to take, Hollywood. That's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> that's some new materials yeah. we haven't discovered yet. <laughs> What Renault have done here is genuinely interesting because I'm a little bit cynical about concept cars. We now know on Fully Charged that we're never probably going to see this exact car appearing on the roads, but the notion of it I think is really, really interesting. And I think it's a, a step that you can make with an electric car that you can't really do with anything else. You know, the, the, the form factor is very adaptable and I would love to see you know, a car that can compact itself to park or expand itself to take more people. Th those ideas are brilliant. And they are, the fact that we do that with aeroplanes now, with their wings get bigger and smaller as you fly, you know, that technology exists. But I think the overarching thing is the idea that you buy a car with, you know, 150 miles range and you go, oh, there's not very much range, I want more range, but you can have a smaller, lighter battery that gives you, I don't want 100, 150 miles range when you use it in a city. But when you want to go on a long drive, you go to your dealership the day before, they put in a massive, great, chunky battery, and then you've got a car that does four or 500 miles, it would be quite plausible, but only for the time you need that, because you genuinely don't need 500 miles range. You don't need it for 98% of the time, but it's brilliant when you do need it, and you can have it, and I think that, idea is brilliant and then what happens with those batteries when they're not in use they're used as grid storage you know you'd have a garage or a service station with a thousand of those batteries in a box under the ground and they are connected to the grid they're charging and discharging and you know leveling out demand on the grid which is a genius use for a piece of technology i got really inspired by what they're doing here and i really hope some of it finds its way into into actual mass-produced vehicles um, that isn't all we've got time for, but that's all I'm prepared to, <laughs> to do today. I'm going to go and have a nap. But please uh, do subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a look at the little Patreon link that's beneath this video because the Patreons are amazing. They, that's what makes this show possible. And as always, if you have been, merci for watching. Take a look at the events page on our website to find out about Fully Charged live events happening near you. www.fullycharged.show